Hello and welcome to everyone joining us for today's Select Science webinar entitled Challenge and Improve Your DNA RNA Sample Preparation, The Advantages of the Bead Beating Technology. My name is Carrie Haslam and I will be moderating today's presentation. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Francois de Hubert, Sample Preparation Product Manager at Burton Technologies. After the presentation, we'll move on to our question and answer session, so please feel free to ask any questions for the Q&A at any time during the webinar, and you can submit your questions to the left of the screen. So throughout the webinar, we will also be releasing some poll questions, so please do answer these as the webinar goes along, that would be greatly appreciated. So without further delay, I'd like to hand over to Francois for, to, for today's presentation, and I would like to thank him again for speaking with us today. Okay, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. So welcome to this uh, webinar, Challenge and Improve Your DNA RNA Sample Preparation. We will present you the advantages of uh, the bit beating technology. Uh, we are very nice uh, to, to meet you. Um, so my name is uh, Charlotte. I will uh, present uh, uh, briefly the introduction and then I will uh, let uh, Francois Dubert, our Presley's product manager, uh, talk to you and Florian Cohen, our field application scientist. And at the end of uh, the webinar, you will have a Q&A session also uh, with Martin Serrano Sanchez, uh, our other field application scientist. The agenda of this webinar is first a brief introduction of Bertin, the presentation of the challenges of uh, sample preparation, uh, we will try to show you how to improve your sample preparation for nucleic acids. Uh, we will then go into more details with case studies and then answer to your questions. So, Bertin Technologies is a brand of the CNIM Group dedicated to provide innovative instruments for key worldwide markets, uh, defense, security, and safety of territories and people solutions for the detection and the measurement of ionizing radiation, uh, high-performance optical systems for the market of space and big science, and uh, hospital waste management solutions uh, to treat potentially infectious medical waste, uh, and life sciences. So let's look at this in more details. So Bertin's teams designs, manufactures, and sells uh, air samplers, homogenizers, microscopes, and their consumables, as well as reagents. Uh, we offer you a comprehensive range of solutions from the collections to the analysis. I will now let uh, Francois talk to you and present you the challenges of sample preparation. Well, thank you, Charlotte. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, so as uh, Charlotte just said, it's, we are going to see together what are the challenges of sample preparation and uh, how we can split um, these challenges. Homogenization is a key point uh, for the obtention of high quality molecules. And um, as a biological topic, um, biological studies require biological samples that are quite unchanged uh, since, uh, since decades. But on the other hand, uh, the analysis methods have con considerably uh, evolved and require uh, nowadays uh, very high quality molecules. Uh, when we speak about qPCR, NGS, uh, but also Western blotting or other other techniques, uh, they require uh, a, a level of quality of molecules which is very important. And so the challenge uh, is to get these high quality molecules from the same biological samples. And the path between those two extremes uh, is what we call sample prep. Uh, basically, we can split the sample prep in two different phases. Uh, the first one would be the homogenization, where you break the sample uh, you are starting, starting from, and then a purification step that will allow you to purify the molecule you, you want to work with in order to make the final analysis. Uh, it is commonly accepted that purification is um, recognized as a crucial point, and homogenization is not, um, for now, considered as a very important step, usually. 
Uh, but we will see that homogenization is a crucial point and can make vary completely the, the results of your final analysis. And we at Bertin Technology are convinced that uh, the homogenization makes the difference. So what are the challenges of sample preparation? So obviously, when you start from a biological sample, the first step is to break it down and to get um, the molecules that it contains released uh, to get purified and analyzed. So this is the first step. Then you have to consider different uh, other aspects, which are the hands-on time to treat this sample, the cross-contamination aspects uh, between your different samples, the reproducibility, and then other challenges that we will focus on today linked to the uh, nucleic acid analysis, which is the yield recovery and the quality of the molecules uh, you get, and then the integrity of uh, these targeted molecules. And this will be treated in a second, uh, in second time. So firstly, the first challenge is to, ch is to break down the samples and for that, here we have a little graphics where we represent uh, on the y-axis the efficiency of the um, of the breaking, and on the uh, on the x-axis uh, the sample hardness. Uh, and here we are going to show different mechanical methods um, to treat and to break the samples. So the first one, which is the most famous one, uh, which is surprisingly very, very used still nowadays in the labs, uh, which is the mortar and pestles. So it depends on the user, but uh, more or less, you can treat nearly all kinds of samples from the softest to the hard hardest ones um, with more or less efficiency. And the limitation here is the strength of the user. Uh, aside that, you have other techniques that are the blender and uh, sonication, and in both cases, you have limitations linked to the techniques itself. Um, so you can treat uh, a little bit more efficiently soft samples, uh, respect to mortar and pestle, but you are limited in terms of hardness. Uh, in the case of the blender, you can break the blades, for example, if you use it to homogenize uh, bones or seeds, uh, and in the case of sonication, uh, it's the same thing. You can treat very soft samples, but uh, it's more limited in terms of hardness. Uh, so the versatility of, of these two other techniques is quite limited. Um, and this is why I'm going to present you the bead beating. Uh, so what what is bead beating? Uh, so Basically, you still start from your biological sample that you are going to place in a tube, and this uh, sample will be placed in the tube together with uh, with uh, some beads, so what we call a lysing matrix, uh, beads that are from a size or a material uh, that can vary depending on the sample you want to treat and, and on the final analysis you want to, to perform. Uh, these techniques then requires a shaking step uh, that can be made in different in different ways. So there is a what we can call a do it do it yourself version, where you can shake by manual method. Um, you can shake manually your your tubes uh, either manually or with uh, a vortex, uh, a bench vortex, uh, which will shake the beads inside the tubes and, and break the sample. Um, this, this is the first version. Then you have what we call 1D bead beating. So this is a dedicated instrument that performs the shaking. Uh, and in that case, you shake the tube from uh, in only one direction. So for example, from left to right or from up to, to bottom. But the, um, the beads will move in only one direction. Um, so this presents the uh, advantage that the instrument makes it very uh, strongly, but uh, the 1D movement of the beads can be a limitation, and we'll explain that a little bit later on. 
And then you have the 3D bit beating, which uh, brings the most benefits uh, just because you have a 3D movement. And so the 3D movement of the beads inside the tube will allow the beads to hit the sample on different angles and increase the efficiency of uh, homogenization, which is not the case in the 1D uh, bead beating, where the beads move from in only one direction and hit the, um, the sample nearly always on the same surface. So you have a kind of heterogeneous uh, way that the sample is treated, even in the 1D bit beating. So if we go back to our little graphics, uh, just in a matter of comparison with the mortar and pestle, which is finally the most versatile and also the most uh, frequently used still uh, nowadays method uh, in, in the labs, when they don't use bit beating, um, you have here the manual bead beating, which is more or less the, uh, the same thing as uh, mortar and pestle. The 1D bead beating, which ensures a little bit better uh, the efficiency of homogenization. And finally, the 3D bead beating, uh, which gives all the benefits that ensures the treatment of nearly every kind of samples and uh, the best efficiency in terms of uh, homogenization. So as we can see here, the efficiency is the best with 3D bit beating, which brings uh, that first benefit. Beside that, uh, as we saw it in, in, in the first part of the presentation, um, you have other challenges to face uh, that are the hands-on time, the cross-contamination and reproducibility. And just by giving a quick look to this present to this table, uh, you can see that um, the, uh, the 3D bit beating brings uh, a lot of benefits by being faster, uh, by treating many samples at the time in a very limited time, that avoids completely cross-contamination thanks to the single-use consumables and um, ensures a very high reproducibility, which is not the case with the other uh, techniques presented here, uh, where you have, in one case, manual method, which is very variable from one user to the other, and um, technical limitation linked to the, to the other instruments. So 3D bit beating has become the, the gold standard for sample homogenization, is used in many, many labs, um, and, and ensures a, a very high efficiency thanks to the benefits that it brings. Uh, as we saw it, it's adaptable to every biological sample, even the hardest ones, like bones or teeth. Um, you can prevent completely uh, the cross-contamination thanks to the single-use consumables. Uh, you can save a lot of time by treating a lot of samples at the time, uh, whereas with other techniques, you, you treat only one sample at the time. It's very efficient, and this has a very high impact on the yield recovery, as we are going to see it. And it's reproducible um, thanks to the fact it's it's uh, an instrument that always makes uh, what you ask it to do it. That's why uh, we at Berton Technology have been uh, working on the 3D bit beating instruments um, that ensure uh, the best efficiency. Uh, and we propose a, a wide range of products dedicated to sample preparation, to homogenization. Um, from the small instrument, which is the minimalist, more dedicated to a well day, daily throughput with a few samples at the time and um, a, a quite good power, uh, to the most versatile one, which is the Presidis Evolution on, on the right side, um, that ensures high throughput and versatility completely uh, thanks to different volumes. Um, Associated to these instruments, we have a, a range of consumables, uh, so made of different formats of tubes, different volumes, uh, from the smallest one, which is 300 microliters by tube, to 15 milliliters, uh, ensuring uh, different kind of uh, experiments and different kind of samples to be treated, from the smallest one to the to the biggest ones. 
Um, inside those tubes, we also provide uh, different lysing matrices depending on the sample as, as we saw it. So we can address different kind of, uh, different kind of samples uh, very easily. And all these consumables are RNAs and DNAs free, which is in the case of the topic we are treating today is very important. Uh, so just to come back to the uh, nucleic acid sample preparation, here we are going to show you and highlight some improvements that uh, the 3D beating technology brings. So if we go back to the workflow, uh, so we still have the sample preparation from the biological sample at the beginning, then the purification step, which is DNA or RNA extraction, and then the final analysis, which is qPCR or digital PCR or um, NGS for uh, next generation sequencing, which are uh, techniques that are more and more used uh, in every um, in every studies. So for these specific techniques, um, the yield uh, recovery and the quality of the nucleic acids are, are of prior importance. Um, the integrity of of these molecules um, as well, and uh, specifically for NGS, uh, there is a fragment length requirement. Uh, so if we go to the uh, recovery yield, uh, here we just show um, an application node that we we have uh, that we have uh, made with in collaboration with a uh, with the lab that was studying um, rice uh, rice genomic DNA. Um, that was working on the characterization and genotyping of, of rice. Um, so they commonly used mortar and pestle, uh, and they compared uh, their classical technique to uh, to the Preselis uh, method. And uh, with lower quantities, so a few um, rice is grains, they managed to get the same level of results um, for their analysis, uh, meaning that they increased the rate of recuperation of DNA uh, from the sample. And in addition, they, they saved time by treating many samples at the time. So the yield recovery is, is very high compared to, uh, to other techniques. Um, another challenge uh, is the integrity of the targeted molecule. So when you work with RNA, for example, uh, RNA is very sensitive to degradation. Uh, the degradation can come from your uh, working conditions. So for that, you need to work in RNAs or DNAs free conditions. And this is brought by uh, our consumables, as I said it previously. But you can also choose to work with uh, a specific buffer that will prevent the degradation of your RNA. But associated to the degradation linked to the sample itself or its environment, there is also a, um, a threat that comes from the techniques that you are going to use. As I said, the 3D bead beating brings a lot of energy uh, inside the tubes, and and the beads by uh, by friction on the sample will increase the heat inside the inside the tube. This heat elevation, uh, as you know it, is very problematic in terms of degradation for the RNA, uh, mainly. So you can get degradation if you have too much uh, heat in, in the tube. To prevent that, uh, we at Berton Technology have developed a, a patented and exclusive system based on dry ice sublimation um, that prevents the heat elevation of the tubes and and uh, and the content of the tubes during the homogenization step. So by preserving a, a cool a cool temperature uh, inside the homogenization chamber, as you can see on on the small uh, small drawing, um, you keep you keep the the samples cool, and so you prevent the degradation of the RNA. So th these are three ways uh, that we provide uh, that we provide uh, solutions for um, for the RNA preservation. And I will let the last challenge 
being presented by uh, by Florian, who will take the the lead on on the uh, final techniques and the case studies. Uh, thank you, Francois. So my name is Florian Cohen, and I'm the field application scientist in Berlin for North and South America. Uh, so the first um, study that I want to present to you um, illustrates one of the third challenge, which is fragment length. Uh, so in this study, um, so this lab was working on DNA extraction from frozen tumor samples um, using so punch biopsies. Um, so their method that they used to use was a manual method that I'm sure you all know. So motor and pestle, and with overnight incubation of the sample in a protein SK solution. Um, so they decided to implement uh, the Fresselis method, which consists in homogenizing for two cycles of 20 seconds the tumor samples, and then um, adding protein SK for just one hour at 37 degrees. Um, and so then they analyzed and compared the two methods. Um, so by performing DNA extraction with the standard extraction kit and characterizing the results with nano drop and tape station instruments. Uh, so the first thing that they uh, observed uh, was that the yield with the Preselis was almost eight times higher um, than the one with the manual method, uh, which is very good because in terms of uh, cost, because the DNA recovery yield is so much higher, uh, the DNA extraction doesn't need to be duplicated anymore, which reduces the cost by half, as you only need one DNA extraction kit per sample. Uh, in terms of hands-on time and total processing, total processing time, they were also considerably reduced uh, with the preselis because the post-treatment time for preselis with the protein SK is only one hour uh, versus overnight for the traditional method. And uh, finally, the tape station results show that the DNA obtained is of very high quality. So you have an excellent fragment length with more than 60% of fragments with a minimum length of 23 kilo base pairs, and you can, as you can see in this figure. Uh, so for this reason, uh, the use of the minimalist tissue homogenizer to homogenize tumor sample uh, proved to be an efficient method compared to the traditional manual sample preparation, and it is now the reference method for this lab. Um, so next, I'll be moving on to uh, other case studies to illustrate some of the other challenges with uh, sample preparation and more specifically the homogenization step. Uh, so, a very interesting study is a study about RNA extraction from mouse artery sample. Uh, so here are the two challenges that uh, this is going to illustrate is um, getting a, a high yield and also preserving the integrity of the RNA molecules. Um, so the samples here so were 30 milligrams of mouse artery tissues. And uh, the idea was to compare uh, three protocols. Uh, one with the Presilis 24 homogenizers and um, the two others with competitor bead beating homogenizers. Uh, so in this case, because we are working with RNA, so the buffer that was used was trisol, and uh, the beads were ceramic beads for Presilis 24 and the first competitor, and metal beads for the last one. And the results, um, so after the RNA extraction was performed with the trisol method, the results were analyzed with the nano drop to, to confirm the total RNA concentration, and the quality was assessed with um, Agilent bioanalyzer. Uh, so the first thing um, that we can see is that uh, the Presidis method enables them to obtain the higher yield by far. Um, so it's almost twice as high as the one for competitor Q and uh, still quite higher than the one for competitor M. And the other thing that is shown by the tape station results uh, are really that uh, you, the DNA that is obtained is also, the RNA, I'm sorry, that is obtained is very high quality. Uh, so the A260, A280, and the ring number are good. In particular, the ring number is higher than seven, which is good for this type of tissues.
Um, so what this shows um, is that the Procedus transfer homogenizers is a good method to um, obtain high quality RNA. And we will show other examples of this. Um, so our next study is about uh, microRNA expression profiling from individual rat hypothalamic nuclei. Uh, so the main challenge here uh, was to obtain nucleic acid of a fragment land compatible with sequencing analysis. Uh, so here, in order to do that, um, the protocol was, that was used was using the Prefilis 24 homogenizer compared with the Krylis cooling unit to preserve the integrity of the RNA. Um, the sample was uh, frozen hypothalamic tissue and the buffer chiazol, to, to, again, to protect the RNA. Uh, so in this case, the small RNAs were purified using the macro RNA ED mini kit from Kyogen with a two column system. Uh, they were then recovered in a volume of RNA-free water and size fractionated on a denaturing urea polyacrylamide gel. Uh, so finally, so RNAs of 16 to 30 bases were eluted in a solution of uh, sodium chloride by overnight incubation under gentle shaking, and then precipitated in the presence of ethanol and glycogen. Uh, for the analysis, uh, we will show that cDNA libraries were constructed using an Illumina-like protocol, and the sequencing was done using a G2X machine. Uh, so you can see here on the figure of the right um, the results, so the microRNA profiles. Uh, so the main thing that can be seen from this um, is first that the the fragment length of the RNAs that were obtained are compatible with sequencing analysis. Okay, so, um, so this study here uh, was a viral metagenomic study on fecal samples. Um, so the idea was to evaluate the quantitative effects of different steps of sample preparation for viral analysis using two techniques, qPCR and next-generation sequencing. So for viral analysis, the two main challenges um, are first, uh, preserving the viral RNA integrity, and second, um, obtaining fragment lens that are compatible with sequencing analysis. Uh, so to do that, um, researchers use a uh, mock viral sample, uh, which included nine highly diverse viruses, among which coronaviruses, um, and um, they tried different procedures uh, for the homogenization, centrifugation, and filtration step. Uh, so for the homogenization, the minimalist personal homogenizer was used. Two different speeds uh, were used for one minute, and um, it was also tested with and without um, speeds. And in terms of centrifugation and filtration, different speeds and different types of filters were used. The RNA extraction was performed with the KM viral RNA mini kit from Kyogen, and the analysis was performed uh, with qPCR and also NGS sequencing with the high sec 2500 platform from Illumina. Um, so let's talk now about the results. Uh, so this uh, first figure that you can see on top of the slide um, illustrates the qPCR results. Uh, so these are the CT differences versus control for different homogenization settings. Um, so these experiments were performed on the mock variant sample. The idea was to try it on the two speeds and uh, with and without beats. What these results show was that the optimal homogenization parameter to obtain maximized viral RNA yield are the lowest speed, 3000 RPM, and um, no beats. Um, so that was the first thing. Um, so now using this optimized homogenization parameters, um, different parameters were tested for centrifugation and filtration, and the sequencing results for these different tests are illustrated in the figure below. Um, and the optimized protocol called Netovia is uh, at the bottom of this figure. So really what you should remember from this um, is that in this case, 
The fragment length that is obtained is compatible with NGS analysis. And also, we have excellent representativity of the viruses. So the NGS results show that all the viruses present in the mock virum sample can be recovered. Um, it also seems like the ratio of viral versus bacterial and sickness or RNA genetic material is strongly altered in favor of viruses. Uh, so to conclude, uh, this optimized protocol with minimalist homogenization allows for fast, reproducible, and high throughput sample preparation for viral metagenomic studies. Um, uh, so this was just a few examples of the studies that we have. Uh, if you are interested in this topic and uh, how to optimize your sample preparation for nucleic acid workflow, I invite you to uh, consult our website and in particular our Bertin Application Center, which contains uh, hundreds of protocols, application notes from the many researchers that use our products. Uh, so now I will let our personalist product manager, François Dubert, conclude on this webinar. Well, thank you, Florian, um, for this presentation. I hope uh, you have seen all the aspects of uh, bead beating and all the benefits that it brings. Uh, as a matter of a conclusion for, for this session, I would just say that um, well, the Preselis range brings a lot of benefits, uh, as, as we saw it. Uh, it's user safe and brings a high throughput. Um, we didn't mention it in the presentation, but it's BSL3 uh, compliant, so you can use it in, in, very, um, in very safe environments. Um, and regarding the bit beating uh, benefits, it's very uh, efficient for sample description, as we saw at the beginning of, of the presentation. So you can treat any kind of sample um, and, and get the great benefit of the efficiency to get all the molecules of interest you, you want, specifically DNA and RNA, and in the best conditions as well. So thanks to the um, consumables and the technology that we bring with the cooling, you can protect your RNA mainly. Uh, but also DNA and other molecules, uh, which is very important. Um, many, many users uh, trust in, in the, in the Preselis range. Uh, we have more than 30,000 users worldwide. And um, as you can see it on the right side uh, with our partner Select Science, they usually leave a, a very good comment on, on the technology and on the instruments. So if you want more, um, more um, more comments sorry you can go and see on the website um, thank you for your attention and um, well if you have other questions we can have the now the session of question and answer where we'll be very happy to to answer your your other questions uh, thanks again and uh, don't forget that nothing beats Preselis. Um, well, uh, your, your points of contact, uh, so myself, François Dubert, that you can reach at the email address uh, here, and the two uh, application specialists, so Florian and uh, Martin, uh, whose uh, email address are, are written here. So do not hesitate to come back to us, and uh, well, thank you again. So now let's move to the question and answer session. Thank you for that interesting webinar, Francois. So let's move on to the last part of today's webinar, which is the question and answer session. So for this session, I'm also delighted to be joined by two expert field application scientists. And this is Dr. Florian Cohen and Dr. Martin Sanchez. So the first uh, question we've got is, um, I have samples of fungi that form resting spores in soils. DNA extraction from these structures from soil has proved very tricky, even with a homogenizer and 3D bead beating. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, well, uh, we will need maybe to get more information about, about uh, this specific sample. Uh, we have uh, a kid named SK38, that is a mix of different bits. And so maybe with this uh, mix of, of different bits uh, and an adapted protocol, 
uh, we could uh, we could homogenize uh, homogenize that. So I think that we will contact uh, 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 the person that asked the question by by email to get a little bit more the detail. But yeah, I think that that would be a, a good option to uh, to homogenize the sample. Perfect. Thank you. So on to the next question. So we've got. I would like to extract RNA from tumor tissues. Do you have a recommend, recommended lysing kit and protocol? Well, uh, always for the RNA extraction, it depends on what kind of sample are we talking about. Uh, each uh, kit contains bits that are adapted in function of the hardness of the of the tissue. For example, we will use uh, uh, CK14 for tissues that are not really complicated to homogenize, as the, maybe the brain of the liver samples. And we will go with something that is a uh, bigger bit, a CK, CK28, to homogenize uh, a skin a skin or the intestines. So uh, concerning the RNA extraction, we I advise to, to run protocols uh, for about uh, 10, uh, 10 seconds and then we will adapt the the speed in function of of, of the kind of sample. So that uh, that's that's the answer for that. So anyway, uh, you are always invited to contact us indirectly. And once that we have the information about your sample, we will provide you an adapter protocol for 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 this uh, uh, down downstream application. Perfect. Thank you. So on to the next question. So I would like to cryo grind animal tissue samples, is it possible with the pre cellies homogenizers? Yes, uh, in fact, among the range of products that we have, uh, we have some uh, metal tubes. So these metal tubes have the, the possibility so that you can use uh, liquid nitrogen. And so you can freeze these metal tubes. Uh, inside, you put the sample of tissue that you want. And then you can use like uh, bigger bits of say 6.8 millimeters. You freeze the whole uh, sample with the metal tube, and then you make a uh, homogenizing protocol that well is going to be a dry grinding. And depending on, on, of the tissue, yeah, you can you can obtain a really good results uh, with uh, you, Turn the the, the the sample kind of powder. So you yes, you can do you can do uh, cryo grinding with the with with our with our material. Yeah, That's if, right. if I can yeah. just com com complement the the answer of Martin, we we have a very good application on on that uh, on that cryo grinding process. Uh, this can can be found on on the website as well. So. Uh, yes, cryo, cryo grinding is a, is a very trendy uh, method, which which takes a lot of um, importance now. And um, yes, we we can definitely address these methods with the with the with the press release and, and uh, metal tubes. Great, thank you. So on to the next question. So we've got we would like to homogenize some bone samples. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. Once again, it depends of uh, the quantity of of tissue sample that you want to homogenize. So in this case, for bones, um, we suggest to use like bigger bigger tubes. We have different formats of, of tubes in the, the Presel slicing kit: two milliliters, seven milliliters, fifteen milliliters. So depending of the size of the the sample that you want to homogenize, you are going to to have to choose among them. So uh, for bones, we can go uh, with uh, a kit named CKMix50, that is a mix of, of bits 2.8 millimeters and 5 millimeters, or uh, go for um, a kit named CK68 that has bits of 6.8 millimeters in size. So these kits are going to provide uh, disruption power that can be able to to yeah to to grind bones uh sometimes when you are working with bones probably you would like to grind them and later make make an extraction for rna extraction or dna extraction of them so that is a possibility but also as we mentioned it before metal tubes are also a good option 
for uh, for grinding for grinding bones. The, the metal tubes have the, the the shape and size of the seven ml ml tubes. You can consult that in our in our on our website. Perfect, thank you. So on to the next question. We've got is pre is used in case studies given, and have you made use of three D bead beating with this? I think that I didn't understand pretty well this question, but uh, yes, uh, all, all 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 the cases there there were there were So preselis is a three three D bit bit bit. Perfect. Thank you. So into the next question. So, what is the best method or procedure to homogenize um, an adipose tissue? So. Adipose tissue uh, could be tricky because is I consider it as kind of elastic. It depends of what uh, downstream application or analysis you want to to do. So uh, with the information that I have right now, I would say only that maybe you can start with 50 milligrams of tissue, and I advise to use CK28 uh, reinforced tubes with uh, that. This is um, a lysing kit that has 2.8 millimeters bit, and also the tube is a, is a reinforced tube. So this gives you the possibility to use higher speeds uh, in the device preselis. So you will have a disruption power that is more important. But what is important here is to make a good relationship between. Uh, I mean, if you don't need to to load too much tissue. So if uh, the the user that is asking this, I suggest if they have already the, the preselis, make the test with 50 milligrams of, of tissue, uh, CK28 reinforced tubes, and uh, about 300 uh, mic microliters of lysine buffer. So probably they, they, they could work fine. Anyway, they are invited to contact us in direct, and we will provide the, the best protocol. Perfect, thank you. So another question we've got is, is it useful to isolate plasmid DNA from yeast cells? Isolate oh, plasmid DNA from yeast cells. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, you, you can you can use Percellis. Uh, in these particular questions, um, then uh, it's important to uh, the choice of the kit because you are interested in to break the yeast cells, and this time you won't go up with a really high speed. So in that way, you will keep. Uh, the quality of the DNA that you are going to obtain. So again, uh, depending on, on, on the type of cells, maybe we could use uh, BK05 or BK01. And then the parameters about the, the speed that you need to do, yeah, so probably uh, you need to, to contact us, but we suggest to use um, kind of milled speeds so in that way, the, the DNA that you are going to obtain is going to be of, of good quality. Francois, do you want to add something to this uh, answer? Well, no, 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 it's, uh, it's what I would have said. So yes, the, the, the use of the process is, is um, what for yeast and plasmids, the, the best choice is, is VK or glass beads with a small size that will target the, the small size of the of the bacteria and then the and the, sorry the yeast sorry um, so yeah nothing to nothing to add but definitely you can target this application with the with the tubes and the technology we provide. Perfect, great. So we've got another question that's come through, which is: Will the composition of the beads affect the organ to be homogenized? So yeah, uh, the the beads are composed mainly in our lysing kits of uh, ceramic, 
which is a uh, zirconium oxide or glass uh, or even metal which is um, which is uh, stainless steel uh, so all these components are inert in terms of uh, well cell contamination or well downstream analysis so there is no uh, there is no risk of um, perturbating uh, the, the downstream an analysis. Perfect, thank you. So we've got how safe is the pre solids with regards to aerosol and during use with the cooling module? Oh yeah, I, I can answer this one. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Um, yes, the the uh, cooling system is driven directly by the um, by the preselis itself, and uh, so the user will target uh, will target a, a given temperature, so between zero and ten degrees, and the system is uh, an active system, which means that um, it follows in real time the temperature inside the homogenization chamber. So not directly in the tube, but inside the uh, grinding uh, area. So under the blue lid that we we saw on the instruments, um, and uh, the the cooling is is uh, always uh, set at the level required. Which means that uh, if the heat increases a little bit, the the cooling uh, is activated. But if you are stable at the given temperature, you you can. Uh, the, the cooling system goes a little bit down and makes a break uh, in order to keep the, the targeted temperature. So yes, the, the, this is a dynamic system. Great. So we've got another one here, which is, how would you compare the homogenization being done by mild treatment with the chemical detergent that would produce holes in the cell membrane? Well, um, I think that that it, it depends of, of what do you want to do. So, so we are not talking about about the same. I would say that if you adapt well, but of course, uh, depending on what do you want, uh, if you can adapt most of the time the protocols to get a good yield uh, for the for the mo molecule that you are looking for. So uh, yeah, uh, like that is is it's hard to 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 compare. Them. Okay, great. So another question we've got is how effective is the cooling module? Are we able to set the temperature, the chamber's temperature before the homogenizing cycle begins? So the the, the cooling module is, is really effective. You can reach a temperature of four degrees uh, really quick. Francois, it's about 30 seconds or, or how long for the for the cryolysis? It's it's yeah. really it's really quick. Yeah, it's really quick when you when you give uh, when you start the the instrument and you you target a uh, temperature you you reach this target temperature between uh, yes thirty seconds or something like that at least uh, less than one minute. So yes, the the system is is quite fast and as we we said on, on the previous question it, it's uh, it's a dynamic system so. The, the control is, is uh, very reliable on that aspect. Okay, great. So the next question is, are there any physical attributes that can indicate that the DNA, RNA extracted has been degraded from too much heat? Well, I would say that maybe you can uh, run uh, some test about the RNA uh, for the DNA, I would say that mainly uh, on the size of the DNA obtained, but uh, it depends also of, of which uh, kind of cells or bacteria or, or or tissue are we talking about. For example, so, someone that is going to be interested in extraction of DNA from from tissue, maybe we are not going to see the impact uh, of the quality of DNA because there are a lot in in, in the sample. But probably if you are going to be looking for DNA in uh, a small amount uh, uh, in bacteria or in some cells, yeah, you can, you can see uh, the difference. So I would say that may, to check the, the RNA degradation, there are the different techniques that you can use for that. 
And that's why when we uh, establish a protocol, uh, depending on the kind of molecule that we are going to, to, to try to obtain, we adapt protocols. I usually suggest to use short, uh, short protocols for about uh, homogenization of between 10 seconds, 15 seconds, it, it, it depends. Yes, uh, as, as yeah. Martin just, just said, uh, well, the, the heat comes doesn't come alone. It comes with the agitation time. And uh, so the, the more you homogenize and you shake the beads and sample together, the more the heat increases. Um, so which means that the, there will have, uh, in addition to the heat uh, elevation, there will also have a, a mechanical aspect to consider, uh, which will break the, the DNA or the RNA in small pieces. And uh, the fragment length can be a good indicator of, of the, uh, well, of the fact that the protocol is too long. But as Martin said, we, we, we do recommend to make short protocols uh, with the short shaking times uh, in order to prevent the heat, but also the extra mechanical uh, effects. And, and this can be adjusted depending the, the tissue you are working with. Okay, great. So is this technology being utilized for COV2 testing in tissue samples at all? Uh, yeah, we, we have... Information yeah, uh, we know that we have uh, some... some uh, there are some labs uh, in Europe that have been working with, uh, with the Presselis uh, during the uh, SARS-CoV crisis, which is not ended completely, but uh, the, the, at the beginning in, in March and April in Europe, they, they've been working hardly uh, on finding, uh, on working on, on uh, samples containing uh, the, the virus. Um, so yes, we, we have already some, some feedback on that. Um, and I think we made an application note and a white paper also uh, con regarding viruses and, and presidies uh, used in the in the frame of virus uh, studies. Uh, so yes, uh, the the, the presidies can be used uh, in virus studies uh, definitely. Um, and there are several uh, several application notes that, that show that you can extract uh, either. Uh, the genetic material, but you can also extract some um, infectious viral particles in order to make some titration or to, to infect other cells or things like that. So uh, a lot of applications regarding viruses in a general way and more specifically in the SARS-CoV-2 uh, can, can be made uh, thanks to the, to the bead beating, to the 3D bead beating of the press release. Okay, that's great. So how good is it to isolate RNA from soil? I mean, that is one application. As I said before, SK38 can be a good option for doing that. Uh, only you have to keep in mind that the RNA extraction, uh, you have to pay attention to the material that you are using for. So if you have the sample and the RNA is there, uh, use the solutions like RNA later in order to protect uh, the RNA uh, from the sample, then use the adapted uh, Presolis license kit as for, uh, SK38, uh, short homogenization times, and it should work. That's great. So I've got time for one more question. So we've got, are there any reactions between the metal beads and the biological samples? Well, we, we usually recommend to use metal beads for I don't know, more, more uh, dry grinding. What we call dry grinding is uh, with a very hard sample and uh, without any buffer in the tube. So something like uh, seeds or, um, or bones eventually. Um, but stainless steel is normally meant not to react with the, uh, with the, with, with the samples, but um, Again, this kind of beads is, is uh, more dedicated to very hard samples. Uh, when you use and when you are uh, compelled to use uh, some, some buffers, uh, we do recommend to use the ceramic beads or even the glass beads um, that may bring less uh, risk, uh, if I can say, in terms of oxidation or, or whatever. 
um, if you have that fear, you, you, it's better to use the, um, the ceramic beads or glass beads. Perfect. Well, that's all we've got time for today. So thank you very much to our experts for that informative discussion and presentation. And thank you to everyone joining us online for your interesting questions. I hope that you found this a worthwhile session. So please also be aware that you can download your certificate of attendance by clicking on the resources tab of the webinar. And if you've got any other questions, please feel free to email me at editor at selectscience.net and I will follow up with your questions. If you would like to listen again to the webinar or invite a friend to listen, it will be available to watch on demand in a few days. So goodbye and thank you once again for joining us.